the next thing which I want to talk about is something that I mentioned in the first very first week that uh, is uh, thermophotovoltaics. So remember we talked about that if you have sun, you know, it would be much efficient if you have this absorber in between and it heats up or it is converted in between and it heats up to a temperature of uh, you know between 2000 to 2500 kind of range and then you use this to essentially convert it uh, to electricity instead of directly converting from the sun uh, you get much better efficiency uh, when you use this uh, intermediate converter and the reason was uh, reason for this was uh, embedded into essentially the different entropy terms so you have an entropy associated with the incoming uh, incoming uh, uh, incoming uh, light but uh, when this converter or the cell heats up it essentially emits out uh, this uh, uh, entropy and then there are additional entropy terms which are associated with the absorption and the emission process so if you take if you account for all these entropy terms and you see how much of this can be converted into uh, converted into work you essentially get uh, this relationship and we talked about this this was the black body limit uh, for uh, solar energy radiation there was a uh, i think there were videos in the first or second week which talked about how we derive this and if you look at this term it looks you know it looks pretty uh, peculiar so it has this temperature to the power 4 term over here and it has one my it has you know almost a term which looks like a carnot cycle over here so you know if i if i look at this formula it essentially looks like this temperature to the power 4 term which corresponds to uh, you know t to power 4 energy coming from the sun and when this is the cell or this converter is acting as a black body it will essentially give out energy or it will give out a black body radiation which is also proportional to the fourth power of the temperature of this converter so essentially these two terms this first term accounts for that uh, you know incoming uh, incoming radiation which has a temperature uh, dependence of fourth power uh, depending upon the temperature of the sun and then radiation emitted from the converter which also has a fourth power dependence on temperature so this just takes into account that and then we have if you have a converter which is heated up to a particular temperature and your cell is placed uh, or you know the energy you are extracting you are extracting it at an ambient temperature uh, so again the maximum energy you can get for this conversion is going to be the Carnot uh, efficiency. So this second term in this equation it, it takes into account that uh, Carnot efficiency conversion. So looking at this expression you can essentially you know, think of it as something which is just a radiative flux between two black bodies. So there's one black body which is the sun there's another black body which is my converter so if I have just radiative exchange between those two I can achieve this uh, efficiency which is given by the first term and then from this second black body which is my converter the efficiency at which I can maximum convert this energy from the black from this converter to my ambient temperature is going to be given by the Carnot efficiency so just by looking at this equation I can you know break it down into these two terms one is a radiative coupling between these two black body and then I take this less hard black body and convert it into electricity by uh, just using a Carnot engine so how do I achieve this you know how do I make a cell which has an efficiency of uh, uh, this Carnot engine uh, you know by using uh, I mean I still want to use a solar cell but I want to achieve this uh, efficiency which are very high which corresponds to this uh, Carnot uh, engine efficiency right so um, again this is breaking these two terms out so the first term is proportional to the fourth power of the converter temperature right so as the as the converter temperature heats up this first term starts to go down right and then I have another term which is uh, 1 minus uh, Ta by Tc so this is the Carnot efficiency term which is converting this hot 
uh, energy from this hot uh, converter to electricity. And the second term goes up as my converter temperature uh, increases. So I have these uh, conflicting uh, you know, directions of uh, these two efficiency conversions. So I get a maximum in between. So I get a maximum of 85%, uh, which occurs when my converter is at a temperature of uh, 2500 uh, Kelvin. Okay. So again, the way to think about it, or the way to remember this is think of this. These two are just radiative coupling. So this is energy coming from the sun. This is energy which is being emitted out from this hot body. And then I'm going to do a Carnot uh, engine uh, conversion between this hot body and my cell. Okay? So this all looks very nice in this block diagram, but you know how to design such a system, right? And then even if I want to design this cell which takes this radiation from the black body and converts it into electricity, what properties should that cell have, right? <coughs> So this is the block diagram for understanding a thermophotovoltaic system. So I have the sun, which is uh, giving me the solar spectrum. I try to absorb most of it uh, into, this, uh, into this absorber material. And I'll heat this absorber material. This absorber material, I'll design so that it heats up to a temperature of 2,500 Kelvin. Right? Now I want to convert this uh, into sun, I want to convert this into electricity at a very high efficiency. So what if I just placed uh, you know, a silicon solar cell in front of this, uh, in, the, in front of this, uh, this hard black body? First of all, would it have you know, a very high efficiency? You think so? No, right? So something more needs to be done. So the thing which is uh, you know, done in between is to put this again uh, spectrally selective uh, element, and it's just like the element, uh, you know, just like the uh, just like the absorber that we discussed for our uh, for our thermal for the thermal th so for our solar thermal system. So it has essentially a step function in terms of its uh, spectral response. So it lets light through which is uh, below a certain wave, which, which is below a certain uh, band gap through this uh, system. And it reflects all the light which is above the band gap of, of the, my choice back to this uh, absorber. So what happens is that only light which is below a certain, uh, below a certain uh, energy or above a certain uh, wavelength can essentially pass through this, uh, through this uh, green material. And everything else is essentially sent back to this absorber. And it gets ab absorbed back into this absorber. And uh, this absorber essentially would have something which, uh, so if I think of the spectrum which is coming from this uh, black body, right? It is going to be like a black body spectrum which is uh, uh, corresponding to a black body which has a temperature of uh, 2500 Kelvin. Now I want, what I'm designing is essentially a, something which lets all this longer wavelength light through while it reflects back this uh, higher energy light or this uh, uh, lower wavelength light back to this uh, absorber. So if I do that, then if I essentially, if I you know, cut out all the wavelength uh, which is uh, above a certain energy, and then I pa make it incident on a solar cell, which has a certain band gap, right? So I have, now what I've done is basically all the part which were, I was losing because of my uh, energy being higher than the band gap, I've cut it off. So I've restricted my spectrum to be all below a certain, uh, below a certain energy. So you know it can now get absorbed with a very high, very high efficiency, right? And even those which are below the wavelength of my cell, you know, so all the red photons which are below the wave, below the band gap of the cell, they will essentially you know get again reflected back, and they will get reflected back again to this absorber. So I'll keep on recycling my photons essentially there till they are of the optimum wavelength at which my uh, band gap of the cell is, right? So again, the way this, uh, the most critical system in this, uh, most critical component in this whole system is this spectrically selective absorber, which has this step function response. 
So it restricts your all the wavelengths uh, uh, which are, uh, or all the energy which are above your band gap to essentially get, uh, uh, get reflected back to the absorber. And only the lower energy photons, they essentially can go to the cell. <coughs> right? So this thing has been, you know, this idea of this uh, black body limit, people have known it uh, all the way uh, back in the 70s. So, you know, thermodynamics is nothing new. It was not invented in the 20th century. It was invented back in the 18th century. So people know about this limit uh, from very long. And people have proposed devices which would achieve this very high efficiency since very long. So our good friend of this class, uh, Dr. Swanson, who gave us uh, our guest lecture, uh, one of the first guest lectures, he actually proposed, uh, you know, such a cell back all the way back in uh, 1976. And essentially, the idea is uh, that you collect all this uh, light and you concentrate it so that you can heat something to a high temperature, right? So you need to concentrate it uh, high enough so that uh, it uh, heats up uh, this uh, black body to a temperature of uh, 2,500 Kelvin. And then you will essentially need a coolant. You'll need something to cool this as well, right? 2,500 Kelvin is a very high temperature. Most things start to melt at that temperature, right? So you'll need a coolant which will essentially maintain the cell at a lower temperature. And then you'll at the back or at the you know at the way back of this uh, system, you'll place this uh, solar uh, cell over here, which would be uh, maintained at a low temperature by using this coolant. And, uh, and in between, somewhere in here, you'll also have this uh, spectrally selective element. And you will make that by using these multiple layers of uh, different uh, dielectric metals and so on. And if you do that, you can you know, achieve efficiencies of uh, very high efficiencies. The problem is, you know, each, at each of these processes, uh, in theory, it's you know, easy to uh, predict such high efficiency. But each of this uh, conversion process such that uh, uh, even your spectrically selective element, it does not have an exact step function profile. Then it's very hard to maintain the cell at uh, a temperature of uh, uh, of 300 Kelvin when your everything else is heating up, right? So, I mean, you can, in principle, you can achieve very high efficiencies, and people have uh, tried making these uh, systems as well, but it never hits the cost point where it's. Uh, uh, so far, it hasn't hit the cost point where it becomes, uh, you know, competitive uh, uh, with respect to, say, a conventional uh, concentrated photovoltaic system. But there's a lot of research which is going on uh, in this area. So this is a, a flow chart. This is an actual system. So this is uh, showing. Uh, so this is showing the front of that system. So it's again like a big disk which is collecting this sunlight. And if you go at the back, you essentially have this, uh, you know, this fluid coming in. So it will keep the whole, uh, uh, it will keep the cell at uh, uh, decent enough temperature. And at the way back, you have these uh, solar cells located over here, right? 